Welcome to the Hustle Wing podcast. Today we are joined by Shane from Champ Titles. Hi there, Shane. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I am well. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It is a pleasure. For folks at home who might sort of not really know much about Champ Titles, could you maybe give us that origin story and, and what you guys are all about? Sure. Uh, so our company replaces the aging title and registration systems inside of DMVs that probably frustrate most of us on a, on any given time we have to go down to the DMV. Um, so most of these systems are old, generally 35, 40 years old, and they hinder commerce for car dealers, fleet operators, insurance carriers, consumers, and lenders. And uh, you know, our company is made up of people who came from those industries, who understood the problems of those industries and came together to really solve what we saw was this this issue with having a good system of record inside of a state that you could interact with digitally. Uh, so by changing the system of record, giving you something that as a consumer or business you can communicate with digitally, you wind up having a much more fluid, uh, efficient experience that is remote and digital. And states seem to be enjoying that the transition to that service. Mm. You guys deal with, as you mentioned, you know, digital titling um, technology. I'm interested in, in in what goes behind that process. Sure. Well, um, you know, most of the time. Uh, States are running on very antiquated systems that can't handle, you know, your your sort of typical transactions that you would expect today as a consumer. You know, you can't go onto your phone and register your car, title your car, see your title, sell it to your neighbor, um, you know, sell it to a dealer, have your lender release your lien without sending you a big packet of mail and stuff you have to try to keep and put in a filing cabinet somewhere. All of that is made digital. So what's going on is that by replacing that old system or um, uh, shifting to a cloud-based system, uh, we're able to track that record of, of provenance in a way that enables all these additional transactions to uh, occur on top of it that couldn't occur before in the paper world or even in what we refer to as the electronic world, right? So when we say electronic, what that means is there's a record somewhere that that car or boat or plane is yours. That's great. When it's digital, it means you can transact on it. You can do things. Probably the analogy is that of a boarding pass. Um, you know, you have a paper boarding pass. There's one thing you can do with it. Get on the plane. If you have a electronic boarding pass, so a PDF that shows your scan, there's one thing you can do with it. Get on the plane. But if it's digital, you can change your seat. You can pre-order your food, depending on your class of service. Um, you can pick your Wi-Fi out. You can check out the the menu items, um, and you can even change your flight, change your change change the, uh, the 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 day time that you're traveling. All of that functionality makes what we do for travel that much easier. So the same way that the boarding pass matured from this paper to electronic to now fully digital experience. Car titling and registration is following the same path, and we're leading the way. You know, I think that analogy is very great because I think it also then shows the different um, aspects of how this platform can almost just help folks, you know, sort of deal with things in a much more quick and efficient way. I'm interested then, you know, because obviously not everyone is 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 digital savvy. Um, in terms of you know user journey and 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 you know the interface of 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 using the platform, how is that? Well, um, I think you know we haven't seen a circumstance where uh, there's a slowdown in digital adoption, right? It's only increasing. So I think more and more of the very small number of people who are in the offline community are able to come online. Um, you know, even for just about every jurisdiction in the U S there's a, there, even for, you know, if you're low income or in rural areas, there are free phone programs pretty much everywhere. So it's, it's now more difficult for people to say, well, I'm not in the digital world. Well, you can be, 
Um, if you don't want to be, you can still go down and, you know, we'll get in line and do things physically. But the clerk that's there will have their digital experience. And hopefully the line moves a bit faster because A, there's fewer people in it because people are doing it on their phone. And B, the clerks have a better experience that enables them to move quicker. So there's no obligation to move and do everything on your phone like I described, but there's an opportunity for everything to become more efficient. And what I say is it's the reduction in the time tax, right? Our, our government not only taxes us from the standpoint of in ta income tax and real estate tax and sales tax and every other kind of tax they get, sin tax on alcohol and whatever else, they also tax us with time by making us stand in line, by going through these antiquated processes, by dealing with antiquated systems. And I think most governments are tired of having their citizens complain about that. They want to solve this problem but they need better systems of record to do that. They need to know they have a good system of record, so they need to be able to have something that they can rely on, but they need a better system of record to move people out of those lines and avoid that time tax. So we eliminate the time tax if you want to eliminate the time tax. Mm, makes sense. Makes sense. I want to change gears a little bit um, and 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 maybe talk about you know projects that you guys are working on and challenges. We we have an audience here um, at Hustle Wing that is mostly side hustlers and contract workers. What projects or even challenges that you guys have that you guys could see yourselves leveraging some contract work from some of our network? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for that's one of the reasons we're delighted to be here and talk to your community. Um, you know, I think as any fast growing company, we're always looking for new talent. Um, talent is often the the hardest thing to find, and you know, I think in this uh, sort of post COVID world, we've seen that more people have moved to wanting to be contract workers. So our view is that um, there are projects that come up uh, from time to time where. Uh, we will require um, that type of talent. And, we, you know, we often find that people do temporary projects with us and ultimately want to be with us full time because they like the culture or the people or what have you. So we're open to that as well. Uh, but our view is meet the market where it wants to be met. If if the market is saying, hey, a lot of the talent's going to contract work, then whether it's front end, back end or middleware engineers, we need them all. Um, you know, frankly, we're, we're growing quite quick, quickly and, uh, there's no lack of projects, uh, for us to be able to take on. So, you know, all, all categories of engineer are of interest right now. Um, probably one place where, um, you know, it's outside of the engineering world. I, I think we start to look at uh, what does customer success look like? Um, you know, what, what does that experience, uh, look like for, uh, for us as we grow. And and certainly that might be a place for people to uh, get engaged on, on a contract basis as well. Cool. And on some of those projects, what, what would they look like? Um, you know, just for maybe a specific reasoning, um, if someone at home, you know, is interested, you know, what, what, what should, what can they be um, on the lookout for? Yeah, you know, we we generally have sort of four to six month projects, um, and and they often uh, turn into the next project, then the next project, the next project. So uh, sometimes they they turn into permanent work, but um, you know that's essentially what they look like from a timing perspective. There's a lot of technical work. We're a very technical place. Um, you know, we have a high bar to 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 get in. Uh, we we kind of like to think of ourselves as um, a place where it's, uh, uh, I think we all feel really lucky to work here, uh, because we surround ourselves with people that, you know, certainly are far smarter than me and people like to enjoy spending time in our community because it's really a interesting, challenging place with a lot of smart people to solve those problems. So, you know, if you, if you just want to do work and, um, and close your laptop and go home, this is not the place for you. Um, if you want to, if you want to work and be part of a community and, and solve really hard problems, then this is the place for you. And, you know, we'd hope you check us out. Cool. Before I let you go, Shane, what's the, what's the future looking like for Champ Titles? Well, the, you know, the, the world continues to move into the digital realm in this sort of old genre of, of titling, right? You know, this, the title is more than 
I mean, the, the oldest one we could find is hundreds of years old. Um, you could argue that there are even some things in caveman drawings about showing ownership over something. Uh, harder for me to validate that because that was not my educational background. But as things can, you know, if you think about the, the course of time, right? So it, it hasn't moved that far in that many years. In the last five years, it's moved wildly into the digital realm. And so moving that title from being something that just represented your ownership to instead being something you can use to get a better loan, get a better insurance rate, um, you know, process your, your claims faster, get your car sold faster, uh, refinance your vehicle faster. And so, certainly something that people are considering as, as rates have gone up so much and, and maybe people are looking to refi at this stage. That's that's how you, um, you you can think about us as maturing in that market, enabling states to provide that functionality to their citizenry uh, so that citizens can avoid that time tax and have a much more efficient experience with their government. Um, and, you know, we hope to keep delivering that. Sure. Folks that are interested in plugging in, where can they find Champ Titles online? Uh, ChampTitles.com. Super easy. Cool. Thank you so much, Shane, for your time. Thank you.